Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 12 of Direwolf20's Space Engineers series. I'm grinding down a gravity generator. Why would you do such a thing, Direwolf? Why? That's a really good question. Why would I do such a thing? Uh, I want to move it. I want to move it to be more of a central location uh, in here. Now, I'm kind of planning out how I want things, and you might have noticed I have a new room. So we'll be talking about that in a minute, don't you worry. Um, but I'm probably not going to put him right smack dab in the middle of this thing, and you'll understand why in a little bit. But for now, I'm going to build my gravity generator doo -doo 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 -doo, right there. Cool. And by simply doing a quick weld on that, it'll clear my inventory of all the junk that I've been collected from grinding, and then we should be able to pick up nice the rest of this stuff. Beautiful. Made it in two runs. Cool. Um, so the main reason I wanted to do this, like I said, is I wanted to um, get the gravity generator in a more central location. With it being all the way over there, it didn't quite reach uh, this area. And um, while we're at it, I'm going to test to see if I can see the gravity field. I know I can't see sensor fields, um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. So welding up the gravity generator, he is online. So there's one thing you'll notice about the gravity generator. He's upside down. What does that mean? It means if I turn off my jetpack, I'm upside down. Luckily, there's a solution to this. Dun, 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 dun. Gravity generators work in both ways. So um, I'm gonna bring down, let's see. So this is a height radius. Let's, let's shrink this down to like, 70. This will just cut down on the amount of power. Also, I want to bring the acceleration. Uh, instead of being 1G, I'm going to make it negative 1G. Cool? So that now pushes me downwards, as we just saw. Um, so let's go and check this out. But I don't want it to be a full negative 1. I like to have it a little bit weaker. So maybe 2 thirds G. Um, and if we check now, I want to just see where the range of this thing is. So let's see if we can actually detect that. Let's go to platform. If we go to the info tab, we can show gravity range. This works just like the show sensors field range. Um, now, the only way this is going to work is A, if you have an antenna, and B, if your gravity generator is set to show on HUD. So let's see if that's something that's visible for us. See, in DirectX 11 mode, it's I can see it, but only just barely. If you look at the edge, there's like this little green line right here. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you, you should be able to see that. So the, the way it should work is that the whole area is filled in with this like green line, but it looks like it's really not visible in DX11 mode. Um, in DX9, I know you can see it a little bit better, but this is the radius and the range of which the gravity is working. Nice, and it reaches all the way out to my new room. That's cool. So that's kind of the, like a full range gravity gen. And of course it'll reach out to about here, it looks like, and probably off in that direction some. So I'm going to go ahead and gravity generator show on HUD off so we don't see it anymore. I'll just name it gravity generator one because it is the first one after all. And um, info tab, I'll take this off for now because it's really not necessary. Cool. So I built a new room. That's neat. Uh, so let's take a look at where we're at. So jetpack off. Boom. Oh, I hit the ground too hard there. That's usually why I like to have my gravity generator be a little bit weaker because usually you can just stop running and it'll be fine but whoops dire derped just a little bit let's bring that gravity gen down to like half a g that should be cool give me this and put away that i don't need that junk works for me he'll uh disappear there in a minute there we go so my sensors work i haven't set up sensors for my new doors yet but i will soon so this is like i said oh look at you we're never really quite finished there you go. Uh, is going to be like a room where I kind of store some basic, like, walk entryway type things. It's going to kind of be like the hub to my base's different areas. So three directions, right? That way, that way, and that way. And here is the first room that's actually going to be functional. Like I said, no sensors yet, so I'm going to have to manually open and close the doors. This is my storage space room. Dun, 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 dun. How's it look? I haven't built anything yet. Don't worry, I will. Um, so what do I have in here? I've got large cargo containers. So these guys, as you can see, um, significantly larger than a small cargo container, which we've been working with so far, in that they are three by three block space. So the small cargo container is one by one, the same size as just a regular old block of armor. But 
large cargo container, three by three, and you can see those represented here. So the way this room is laid out, in my opinion, is pretty functional. Um, so we've got a nice looking glass ceiling and everything looks nice. I just kind of welded this all together between last episode and this and placed uh, the large cargo containers, but obviously I need to produce some components in order to start storing things. And I'm also gonna have to hook this up to uh, our network system here. So let's come back in a minute and check that out. All right, guys, we're back. And you'll notice a giant red line going across my base. I use this to mark where I want things to be. Um, you can paint blocks. This is a neat trick. Uh, just hit P on your keyboard to go into the color picker, and you can see that there's a large array of things you can do. Um, so you can change the hue, you can change the saturation, you can change the value, and there's some default colors down here that they give you to start off with. So if you wanna do all kinds of crazy cool stuff, like, you know, you can have a good old time with it. Um, but I usually stick with uh, just the defaults. I'm gonna try and do some good coloring of some things probably as we progress in the series so that we can kinda use it as a tracking point. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna stick with it. And in order to color a block, you just have to mouse over it and hit P and it'll change the color very easily. Nice, right? So nice, easy way to change colors here. How cool is that? And you can do that with all the blocks. So you can see I've done that with, um, you know, the, the um, block right here, the conveyor tube, which by the way, I'm about to break. Oh, goodbye items. Whoops. Um, that was not supposed to happen, but it's okay, I'll live. So I'm going to pop in a conveyor block here. Let's get this up and running with a small steel tube. 20 or so. And there's a pretty good reason I'm doing what I'm doing here. This should get things back up and running very quickly. There we go. Everything's running again. Nice. By the way, I'm curious just to see where I'm at with some of my ore backlog stuff. So I'm processing a good amount of silicon, magnesium, stone, nickel, and iron. Nice. Let's check the refinery inventory. Yeah, lots of stuff getting processed. A little bit of magnesium still left in there to get processed. You can see I did a little bit of mining between last episode and this because I was kind of paying attention to my ingot summary screen there. And you can see nickel I'm a little bit low on, cobalt a little bit low on really use even more magnesium to be honest with you. I'm surprised I don't have that much because I did go mining for a lot. Like a lot. I guess you get a very small yield out of your magnesium which is concerning to me because I really did grab a lot of magnesium. Uh, let's see. So there's magnesium in the refinery. Wow. That's a small amount of magnesium for how much I mined. Oh well. Back to the task at hand which is I want to connect my main control network here all the way over here and i want to do it in a way that's going to be future proof for us so at least somewhat future proof so let's first get these guys running so one two i'm just going to run these all the way across oh ran into a problem got that sensor there i can't put a block in his place so i'm thinking what i might want to do Inertial dampeners off is a great way to do stuff like this. <laughs> All right, maybe I want to go one block down, or do I want to move the sensor? That's a really good question. I'd have to move both these sensors, and I might just have situations where I want at least one block space underneath my flooring for other things, like other sensors and the gravity generator, for example, and a couple other useful things. So I think what I'll do instead of that is we'll come over here, we'll hit this guy. And then we'll go. That works pretty well, right? Okay, now we're going to want a conveyor here so that we can then go off in this direction. So you'll see that my piping system is kind of matching um, the, the walkway that I have under here. And then we're gonna wanna get into here. So what we'd probably want is the center here, and you can kind of see it, it's not welded yet, but the center of this block is where you can get a pipe network in. So right in the middle of this room, 
So here and to here. This is where I'm going to want this dude. Okay. And then it's one, two, three blocks away from here is where we're going to want to drill up. So this is one, two, three blocks away. And that's where our connection is going to go for our pipe. So we'll do this, five, rotate it around. Actually, no, it has to be one lower. There. There. To here. Cool. And then the same here. So one, two, three. Perfect. One, two, five. Rotate him around like that. And then one, two. So once these are all connected, we should have um, access to both rows of stuff. And it's kind of nice having your conveyor tube network one block away from the floor instead of directly under it. It allows you to get in and out a little bit better, and there'll probably be other benefits as well. I think that looks pretty cool, right? Yeah. Maybe at some point we'll like do something with that so it looks a little bit nicer, but that should work for now. Um, this is going to require quite a bit of welding. Let's get our main welder into position. Basic welder. Yeah, you don't have any components in you, do you, basic welder? You are just all kinds of not helpful today. We'll let him weld whatever he happens to have in him. And I'm sure he's got something that's helping. I'm going to have to do the rest myself. So I'm going to do this off camera. Um, we'll come back in a moment once I've got some welding taken care of. Okay, guys, we're back, and I think I've completed this. I, I just manually carried around the few conveyor systems that I needed to carry, like the, the motors and the small steel tubes and that stuff, because that's all usually pretty small, so it was pretty easy to do. Got them all attached, and then everything needed steel plates and glass, which happened to be in my big welder. So uh, that's what I'm welding the last few pieces together of now, and that should turn green. Nice, look at that. So everything's green um, except the endpoints back here because I haven't quite yet hit and welded these guys. So let's get them into place. So you're going to need some more interior plates, computer, construction component. It's about all you need. And then we're going to have a really nice time because we can store a lot of stuff in there. Construction components, motors. Was that motor? think so. And more interior plates. Oh, I can't hold any more, so for now this will do. And then I'll come back for the interior plates. So computers times eight, and then all interior plates from there on out. So we'll empty our inventory everything else. Computers times eight, and all interior plates from there on out. Probably have to make two runs of interior plates, so apologies in advance. Yep, well, no, actually, I'm good. Because this will get us up to the red bar. So let's take a look here. Large cargo container, welding it up. Look how big this thing is, it's huge. It's aptly named, it's a large cargo container. It can hold a lot more than your standard cargo container can. So if we open up this guy, we should be able to access everything out there. So look, it can hold 1.2 million liters. By comparison, this guy holds 46,000. 46,000, 1.2 million. You kind of see where I'm going with this. So definitely a nice thing to have. Um, the way I like to do my naming of things is anything that I want to access easily. So typically things like components, I want to have cargo in the name so that right now we've got a bunch of stuff here, right? But if I search for cargo, you'll see that the only things that come up are the inventories that have components. Rarely will I need to manually interact with ores or ingots or anything else for that matter. 
So this way I can just search for cargo and I'll find it. So that way, what I want to do here is, so we'll see that component P5 and P6. I'm going to name this component P4. Now, if we look in our inventory here, we'll see that component P5 and 6 have been emptied. So now we can go into here and I'm just going to remove these guys. I'm going to name them small one and small one. I'll make this guy two, not that it matters, but there you go. And then I can make this guy back to priority five. Neat. So now we've got 86,000 out of 1.2 million. So we have a huge amount of cargo capacity available to us now. Um, and I want to do the same right here. Yoink. So I'm going to need interior plates, construction components, and small steel tubes. Interior plates. Which, by the way, even though this functions without it, I should probably weld up the last of them. The last thing you want is that thing breaking. Construction components, small steel tubes, and motors. Construction components. Small steel tubes. Displays, computers. I know I need all these things. And motors times 20, and then I'll be good. And I'll do the same thing here that I did over there, but for ingots. Cool. So these are the two main types of inventory that I've been needing thus far, is um, components and ingots. So now all of our ingots will wind up getting stored here. And if correctly configured with our piping system and everything, we should be able to put everything in this inventory, cool. So we'll call him, uh, we'll just leave it large, and then we'll say ingot P4. If we check our inventory, ingots should show up. Yeah, look at that, large ingot, nice. That is awesome. Um, that is really cool. So we've got a large amount of ingots, and if we check our ingot screen here, we had like, I don't know how many, let's check over here and it would be easier to see. We had one, two, three, four, five ingot inventories that we no longer need to worry about um, because they're all consolidated now into this one large, cool. So I'm gonna remove these, we'll just leave them named small, that's fine. Having the colon there is optional, I guess I'll put it, so I'll just say large ingot, large cargo component. It's not necessary, but it just looks nice on the screen, kind of. Cool. Um, so let's see what other small inventories we've got going on. So we had the ammo one. Is that really it? Let's go see. I'm just going to make a quick flight across here. I obviously haven't, uh, you know, set up the bridge. I'm debating. You know what? I'm kind of not going to lie, but I almost like not having a bridge there. We'll have to see how I want to handle that. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. There's a couple ways we can do with that bridge. I almost like not having it, though, to be honest with you. Anyway, um, so let's, like, grind stuff, right? So right now, uh, this guy's empty. This guy's empty. We should have cleared out all of these. So ingot, ingot, ingot. These were all ingot containers because that's how many ingots I had. Um, and then this guy, small, this guy has the ammo. So he's one we might want to keep. And this has an ore backlog. I picked up some ice while I was out there mining and nothing in my system that's connected to the deal can deal with ice, but I'll just put it in my oxygen generator for now. So that cleared out the ore backlog inventory which I might want to replicate somewhere else. We'll see. And then ammo, all he's got in there is one torpedo. So we'll deal with him later. For now, let me grind up all this junk that I don't need, and we will come back in a minute. I should probably not name you ammo. But yeah, we'll come back in a minute. Let me get rid of all these cargo containers, because I really don't need them anymore. All right, so now that we have a lot more inventory space, I want to modify um, the amount of stuff to keep on hand. So I want to have like 2,500 construction components, maybe 1,000 metal grids, maybe 2,500 of you. Steel plates is probably good where we're at. Small steel tubes, at least 1,000. Same for large steel tubes, motors, and displays. I might increase these even, believe it or not, later. 1,000 computers. Everything else will kind of leave. I have like low numbers of, but I don't have automation for those. Let's see what that's doing to my 
energy usage. Spiked it up pretty high, as you can see. Wow, 24 megawatts, nice. Um, if we check our production tab, uh, steel plates, currently paused. Don't tell me we're out of ingots of iron. No, no, it's just paused, right? Yeah, let's do this. Oh, right, they're hidden. That's why. I was going to say. So steel plates is off, bulletproof glass is off, but construction, interior, small tube, large tube, display, girders off, motor and computer, they're all on and running and automatically fulfilling the quotas that I've just defined. How cool is that? So now we're going to have a large number of components available to us at all times, all courtesy of the fact that now we have a large inventory that we can use. And if we check cargo, we'll see that we're about to hit one-tenth. We're not even at one-tenth yet because it's 1.2 million and we're not even at 120,000. But we're getting close to that one-tenth marker. That is awesome. All right, we will be back in a minute once this is all done. All right, guys, so we have officially got our first room in our base. I should probably seal up this floor. Do, 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 do. And I'm pretty excited about this because it means that we actually have like a base. Like it's not just whatever, it's actually a functional base, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Might break these down and turn them into windows. I'm thinking that's probably a good idea. Kind of similar to what I've got. Yeah, I can do that. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, just want to make sure it remains airtight because once we get to oxygen, that's going to matter. You can see on the indicator on the bottom right, oxygen none. Eventually, we might want oxygen. Um, so we've got other inventories here that are available for future use. So I planned this room out to be expandable. So I've got a stupid amount of inventory space right now, like more than I'm going to need for a really long time. And that's two. I've got one, two, three, four times two, eight remaining inventories available. I can add more for ingots and maybe eventually down the line we'll have other types of stuff that we'll want to hang on to. But for now, this is pretty well advanced into the future. And if I really want to, um, I could always expand this room out further in that direction if I really want to. Hey, look, there's a ship crashed into an asteroid from last episode. <laughs> um, so what am I going to do next? I'd like to build a welding bay. Oh, hey, what happened here? That's interesting. I didn't notice that, but I must have knocked my welding arm off here. Well, that's not cool. I bumped into something at some point. Didn't even notice it. How bad is that? So let's get a new twin welder here. I'll have to fix that in a moment. But uh, what I'd like to do, I'll get that welded in a moment, uh, is build over here. So that room there is the inventory storage. That's where we're going to hold all of our stuff. Over here, I'd like to build a room whose main purpose will be an assembly bay. I'd like to build a room whose purpose is building ships for me. Um, now, there's a couple tiers that we can go through, and we're going to go through uh, one process that I think is going to be pretty cool. It's a neat idea. I think it'll work out pretty well, and I'm excited to show you guys how I have it planned out. So we'll get started building this out. Let's see, I know I want, how am I for steel plates? I need more, because I just welded that welder. That was my bad. So we're gonna hit cargo here. See how useful that is? Nice, right? Um, and what do I need for windows? I kind of forget. Uh, that I need girders to start. See, easily type cargo. I can search what I want. I don't know how many well windows I'm going to want right off the bat, but we'll see. But for now, I know we're going to come in here, and then we're going to go... I want it to be 17. So that's going to be divided by 2, 8, right? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I kind of planned this out in my single-player world, my creative one, so I want to check that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Cool. So that gives me a total of 17, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Cool. And then I want 12, so that's going to be 11 more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then this should be a total of 10. Did 
I math that wrong or can I just not count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow, okay. I must have completely messed up, but that's alright. Um, it doesn't matter, it, has, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll see. Um, does that look cool? Or Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. That'll look neat, because my plan is to... Yeah, this will be cool. I'm going to build ships inside this giant room, and it's going to be taller and larger than anywhere else I've built thus far. And I'm going to have... Um, some bay doors here that can open up to let the ships out. So they're going to basically be built in the center of this room and then they'll be able to fly outwards. So I want this to be decently tall. I haven't really calculated how much height I want on this thing just yet, but I want it to be decent sized. So let's bring it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Does that sound cool? That's a pretty good height on things, I think. Yeah, that should allow for some decent buildings. They're mostly gonna be building drones in here and smaller ships. I don't really think I'm gonna be able to build something too large in here. I just wanna make sure, I don't wanna go too tall. Yeah, the height I didn't check. It was just the length and width. And this looks pretty good, right? Let's, to get a good size approximation, let's get our welder drone in here right so dire welder three remote control go whoosh so where am i in relation to my base sometimes that's hard to tell so just to get an approximation of size because sometimes out in space it's hard to get an idea of size so let's imagine that we were building this drone right in here oh yeah we definitely have a decent sized room for this I mean, this easily will be built in here, and we can build larger ships as well. So this will be the small ship assembly room. When we want to get to large ships, we've got something else planned for that. So let me do this. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tall. I'm going to go build out the rest of this room, and then I'll be right back. All right, let this be a lesson to you. Plan out how you want your place to look a little bit better before you build it. Um, I decided I'm going to bring this down one block lower. It doesn't need to be that tall. Or do I want to bring it up two? Or do I just want to have a line of single pane windows? All these questions and more will be answered after we get back. All right, so for an even better approximation of size, uh, I think I'm going to bring this down one. It's probably a good idea. Let me come back in a moment once I've done that. And done. So brought that down a level. So you can see a rough outline of what this area is going to look like. Um, I'll probably wind up... Ooh, energy low. Sorry. It's a suit. I forgot you needed energy to run. Um, and then we'll, we'll do something here. I always kind of figure out what I'm going to do with that last glass pane thing. Something like we did over here-ish, kind of. I don't know. But yeah, that looks cool, right? Um, now for the roof and the door. Well, I think we're going to leave you guys in a little bit of suspense for that. We're going to have to come back to that point. So let's remote control this guy and see what we can do by way of welding. You know what? Before I do welding, I want to go fix his arm. So we'll, we'll sort this out real quick. What's nice, by the way, is... Um, Leaving this cargo container here gives me a nice point at which I can access things. So that's going to be really useful. I know I need power cells. Let's make like 10 of those. I always forget. There they are. That should be enough. So we'll get some motors. And some small steel tubes and some computers and some metal grids. I don't know what all is needed for this thing. Power cells, large steel tube, and a lot of construction components. Power cells, we need three. And a lot of construction components. And then a large steel tube times five. This will get this thing up and running again. Uh, 
And eventually, I'd really like to build ships that are self-repairing. And I do have an idea on how to do that, believe it or not. Energy. Again, something you're going to have to wait for future episodes to see. That's probably a little bit of a ways off, but we'll get there. Don't worry. But yeah, self-repairing ships, that might be cool, right? So let's refill our energy here. Um, I'm going to refill it at this guy. I believe that this medical station, you'll notice it refilled my oxygen. I, It can do that if it's connected via a tube network to an oxygen generator, but I don't think this guy is connected to him. Unless these two adjacencies here are causing a connection, but I don't think they do. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or not, but basically the medical station should be refilling my oxygen, but only if this is connected to that. So I don't know what the deal is there. If I do this... That turned blue as if it was processing. It's interesting. 2413.07 mass. I don't know. Beats me. But, uh, yeah, let's get to welding here. Basic dire welder 3, remote control. So this one's my ship welder, or my, my, my station builder. But eventually I would like to replace the basic welder that I have with a ship uh, of the same design, but just built to hold every component type, right? So motors and computers and all that good stuff. So let me get this welded up and we'll be right back. Oh, by the way, before I forget to remind you guys, when you have to replace a welder, you'll notice that your welder is no longer in the same group. So don't forget to just add it. So what I did there was control clicked on the welder that wasn't part of the group and just hit save again. So this way, I noticed I was welding a little bit slowly and that was why. <laughs> I didn't turn on the other welder because it wasn't part of the block group. Er, derp. All right, guys, I am wrapping up the welding of this room. So once it's all done, I'll show you how it looks inside. But I think it looks pretty nice. Also, I just really enjoy welding with a drone. Like, it is so cool to be looking through a camera and flying it remotely. Meanwhile, I'm going to go get close to docking because I'm going to dock it. Trust me, by the way, once that weird little bug with autopilot is fixed, drones will be so much easier to deal with because I don't have to manually dock them. I can just hit a button and they'll automatically dock themselves. But anyway... I think this room looks pretty nice. Dun dun dun. Not bad, right? So I don't have a ceiling and I don't have a door. Why not? We'll find out next episode, unfortunately, for you guys, but not for me because I know. But you'll find out next episode because uh, for now, I'm going to wrap up. We'll come back next time. We will um, put a ceiling and a door on here, both of which will be a little different than anything you've seen before. And we're going to set up an auto welding system, which is going to require some more conveyor tubes and all that good stuff. So for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time to have a little bit more fun with Space Engineers. All right, guys, take it easy.